You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. I am changing my moniker for this show, with this show only. <laughs> In honor of Mr. WrestleMania, I am the Huck Break Kid, Will Huckabee. <laughs> <laughs> I am going, when I see you next weekend, I am going to call you that the entire weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's too good. I don't, I don't have any snappy responses to that. So how, how you been doing, brother? <laughs> I'm doing really good, man. Doing really good. Uh, had a good weekend. Uh, seen some amazing, was a part of some amazing wrestling, seen some amazing wrestling. So yeah, it was a good weekend. That is awesome. That is awesome. Um, what you got coming? Uh, you, you're you're staying uh, in North Carolina this weekend, right? Yeah, actually, um, I actually canceled whatever show. The shows I had this weekend got canceled. Uh, so, but it's actually I'm celebrating my my wedding anniversary, my fourth uh, wedding anniversary and stuff this weekend with my wife. And technically, my anniversary is Thursday, um, but you know, you have kids and work and stuff. So, we're actually going to go out and stuff. We got babysitter for the kids for the weekend and everything, and. Me and the wife are going to enjoy a lovely weekend, just the two of us. Uh, AKA, we're going to probably sleep the entire weekend away, kind of like how we did last year. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I am. I'm taking the weekend off from wrestling as well. I am going to a wedding on Saturday night, so uh, it, it should be a lot of fun. It's it's an open bar, and uh, I've even heard that it, they're going to have a mashed potato bar. Yeah. I, I've never been to a wedding with a mashed potato bar or anywhere with a mashed potato bar, so I'm super excited for that. What is a mat? I, I don't understand a mashed potato. Did, where else do you put on mashed potatoes besides like butter, gravy, maybe like some green onions, salt, pepper? What else I, are you going to put on mashed potatoes? Garlic. Hmm. I don't Take know. I will report it. back to you next week. Please do. Take a picture of that. All right. Uh, you I'm, definitely got to take a picture of that. Yes. All right. I'm just. Jumping in here, because I had to look this up. Apparently, this is described as one of the latest wedding crazes. They (laughs) they actually serve, like, big scoops of mashed potatoes with various toppings in champagne glasses. Oh, man, I'm I'm already fancy. I'm already like the Nature Boy Ric Flair. Are you serious? I'm serious. Here, the options are endless, but some of the top fixins that, yes, it says fixins, F-I-X-E-N-S. <laughs> some of the top fixins for a mashed potato bar include bacon, cheese, sour cream, diced ham, broccoli, salsa, and red peppers. Okay, first of all, that, that, that article... Uh, has already lost cred- credibility with me because being a true southerner, you don't spell fixins with an I and then an E. It spells with two I's. It's F I X I N apostrophe S. Well, no, well, this is F I X E N S, so. No, no, that's definitely a Yankee thing. Hmm. <laughs> oh, apparently there there is a page with the Idaho Potato Commission promoting this. <laughs> you can try it with black caviar, sautéed mushrooms, and olive tapenade. Basil, All right, listen. Basil pesto. Hey. Uh, you're you're gonna have an amazing weekend, Will. Let me tell you. No, I. It's, well, my, it's me. Uh, I mean Zane. I'm weekend. sorry. Uh, yeah, but yeah. The only thing Will's doing this weekend is is smothering mashed potatoes on his wife. <laughs> oh. And then he says he's going to whip it good. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe you can take your lovely bride to uh, Shoney's or something <laughs> and make your own uh, mashed potato bar there. I'm, uh, so, for the record, we are like, I have kids. Zane, you have kids. And so, you know, like, one of the biggest things you, you cherish as a parent is sleep. Um, yes. We're not going to have any kids this weekend, so I'm going to actually get a chance to sleep in late. I'm probably not going to get up to like noon ish, you know, and then hang out with like hang out, you know, go check out some movies because we never get to go to the movies without the kids. Um, so we're probably going to watch a couple of movies, go to the movies like every night, uh, go eat and then sleep all day and all go in, go to bed early, stay up, like go wake up late. You know, I, I, I'm predicting like 
a good 16 hours of sleep a day. Well, is she going to be okay with you watching uh, uh, the Hall of Fame ceremony on Friday, NXT TakeOver on Saturday, and the Mania card, which is like 16 hours long on Sunday? Oh, my goodness. Uh, I probably won't get, be able to watch like the, the Hall of Fame ceremony. Maybe I'll watch like the, the NXT TakeOver. Um, it just all depends on what's going on Saturday, but definitely Sunday. Uh, she already knows, like you know, WrestleMania. I'm definitely going to watch WrestleMania and stuff. We'll go hang out. Like, by then, we'll be home and stuff, and we'll have the kids. So by the time the actual, sh- maybe not the pre-show, but definitely by the time the show starts, you know, I'll be in a friend's house and stuff, get ready to watch WrestleMania. Okay, sounds good. Hey, um, I uh, had uh, listened to Cheap Heat podcast uh, today, and they had. Uh, the new day on, they did not talk to Xavier Woods about any videos floating around, but, uh, uh, the new day had mentioned on this that they would love to take on the Hardys and they mentioned the name, the Hardys. Um, what, what do you think that the chances are that the Hardys will show up at WrestleMania? And what did you think about their, uh, Lake of reincarnation promo with the, uh, TNA, uh, tag champ, uh, tag championship belts? Um, I, I don't see them uh, going to. I don't, I don't see them being at WrestleMania anytime this year. Even though we've heard rumors that WWE was looking at buying ROH and stuff, uh, I, you know, we just heard reports and stuff that they just signed a contract with ROH. So, therefore, I don't think ROH is going to let them leave anytime soon. Uh, so, I definitely think that that's not happening. Uh, as far as the video goes, you know, I've said it before. I'll say it again. You know. Matt Hardy has definitely, this is probably the best cre- best year he's ever had creative wise. Uh, I love the broken Matt Hardy gimmick. I love the, bro- the brother Nero gimmick and stuff. Um, not only did I love, you know, the, the, the video and stuff and the little, little jabs they were taking, uh, at Impact Wrestling when they were talking about the man who likes to slap nuts. Um, and then they had a little flash. I, I don't know if you noticed his name. But there was like a a third of a second where the words F the owl, the hashtag F, the, F that owl, uh, mm-hmm. flashed in the screen. Um, that, that, you know, I, the whole thing was great. The video was great. Um, the new belts look beautiful. Like, oh, my God, those are some real. I mean, I, at first I thought they were like, you know, like the Omega Tag Team Championships or something. That's what they want to say. Uh, but that totally was not it. Like, the new belts are just so beautifully crafted and stuff. Like, those are the belts. The, the way those belts look, I would expect for WWE to have their belts to look that way. Like, they definitely look like championship wrestling belts and not some kids' toys like all of WWE's belts look now. Um, but more than that, what I loved was, if you watch the actual video from the Hardys and stuff, was if you read the description on YouTube, uh, <laughs> it was saying how, you know, that the video was you know, created, directed, produced by Ruby Hardy with no, you know, no input from Impact Wrestling, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Ask that owl. Like, it was really like, oh, man, they're, they're not playing around when it comes to this lawsuit and stuff. Yeah. Uh, what was what was uh, the belt, though? Was it a Broken Hardy championship? Are they doing, like, the Young Bucks where they're making their own championships now? Yeah, it was, like, the Broken Hardy championship. Um saying that they're the best tag team in all of space and time. Um, so it's like the all, it's like the broken, the broken championship or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's, it's like I said, the belts look really, really good. You know what I'm saying? Like in a video, you get a chance to see them. It doesn't really show up up close in detail. I tried to go online and get like a, an actual good picture of them, but I couldn't find one, uh, just yet. I'm pretty sure it'll, the pictures of it, uh, will be coming up soon and stuff. be released to the public soon. Um, but I just love the way they did it. I mean, you know, we're talking off the air and stuff about how, you know, Killer Kev was saying, why does the Hardy still have the TNA titles? And, you know, like I told Killer Kev off, uh, off the air and stuff, it's because the powers that be at TNA, you know, they, they made a huge mistake. They obviously, they thought that they had it in the bag. And when they, they I feel like they negotiated the contracts too late, Zane too late in the game at the, at, the, at the last hour they tried to renegotiate the contract uh, and they just forgot to take the tag titles off the Hardys. So they had possession <laughs> they had they, they had possession of the tag titles well now TNA Wrestling is no longer around now you're Impact Wrestling they're the last TNA champions nobody else can say that 
they still have possession of the titles to do with as they please. Well, um, maybe, maybe not legally, but they can always claim that. Yeah, they can. <laughs> what, I mean, what they can probably hold that kill the cat. What? TNA doesn't exist anymore. As far as I'm concerned, it's abandoned property, right? Okay, all right. But what do you think about the uh, oversight of uh, uh, not taking the belts off them before letting them go? How stupid. I mean, really. I mean, this this is a classic indie-rific mistake that we've seen plenty of wrestling promotions do over the years. Hell, Vince McMahon's even done it once or twice himself. You'd think somebody would have clued him in, uh... We need these back before we do something stupid like, I don't know, not re-sign the tag team champions to a fucking contract. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Seriously, can we get Dixie Carter back on board? <laughs> I, I never thought those five or six words would ever come out of my mouth, but Jesus Christ, they are fucking this up so hard. I, I have not seen such stupidity since Jeff Jarrett tried to give away gold. <laughs> All right. Well, do you have anything else to add about the uh, the Hardys before we move on to count two? Uh, no, not really. I, like I said, they're, they're so creative, man. Uh, I just can't wait to see what they're going to do next. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I know that they've signed a contract with Ring of Honor, but I think it's just a short-term deal. Most of the time with Ring of Honor, they they allow people if they're pursued by WWE, they'll let them go. So uh, I don't know. I I I don't think that Ring of Honor wants to make any enemies with WWE. So if they if WWE wants the Hardys, they'll get the Hardys. Um, if if you know all the schedules line up and everything, I I think that that would save at least partially. Uh, Whatever's going on with the tag teams at WrestleMania. So we'll, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, count two on Saturday night. It is the NXT takeover Orlando and, uh, it's, it's at the, uh, Amway Center. It's not at Full Sail University. So this is a, a big capacity, um, arena there in, uh, in, uh, Orlando, uh, holds, uh, you know, approximately 20,000 people, depending on the setup for it. And, uh, you know, it, it's going to be a great weekend for for WWE. They sold out um, the Hall of Fame ceremony on Friday, sold out NXT on Saturday, sold out WrestleMania, or at least close to it. I'm sure that they papered a little bit. But uh, sold out the 80,000-seat arena there for WrestleMania, Sold out the Amway Center for um, Raw on Monday, and then sold out the arena for SmackDown on Tuesday. So that's five nights in a row where they've got sellout crowds. That's pretty amazing, and that doesn't even take into effect all the other shows going on this weekend. Um, but uh, you want to? Do you want to do some predictions for the NXT Takeover? Sure, uh, but before we get to those predictions, I think um, that. The, the 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 roster at WWE um, more than any other year I do believe uh, really has to step their game up this year. Uh, we all know that you know every year at WrestleMania you have you know uh, at least a dozen other wrestling companies down there in that city. Uh, there's uh, as far as I know there are like six to eight different shows. There's like six different shows, uh, eight different shows, so eight different shows going on. Uh, in the Orlando area, um, not inclu- including ROH, uh, Evolve, FIP, um, was Punk, it, Pro. Uh, uh, Punk Pro, which is, you know, a lot of my friends and stuff are wrestling on that. Uh, there's just tons of wrestling shows going on that weekend. And everybody, you know, you have all the eyes of the wrestling world are sitting on Orlando right now. All the guys, whether they're working for WWE or ROH or whatever, are definitely going to bring 110%. We're going to see matches. You know, everybody's booking the best possible matches that they can get. Uh, you know, they're getting the best talent. It's some, the best talent in the world, with the exception of, like, uh, Kenny Omega and New Japan. The New Japan wrestlers are in Orlando right now. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if we hear a lot of reports that there are matches outside of WWE that may or may, or may not uh, steal that weekend and surprise a lot of people. Well, well, that being, well I was just going to add that, you know, WWE is going to have at their access events, 
They're going to have uh, Evolve Wrestling involved. Um, they're going to have uh, some British wrestling involved in a WWE ring. Um, so that, that adds another twist to it, too. So it's pretty amazing things going on right now. Yeah, um, actually, the, the one match, more than any other match, the match I'm really disappointed that I'm not going to be able to see live uh, is taking place for Evolve Wrestling. It's the Evolve champion, Fred Yeha, versus uh, Evolve star now, a former ROH talent, uh, ACH. I know both of these guys. Both of these guys are in the best shape of their life. These guys are super athletic, super talented. Um, you know, ACH is a great high flyer. Um, Fred Yeha, uh, if you guys don't know about Fred Yeha, let me first tell you that this guy is a wrestling machine. Um, he has wrestled with some of the best wrestlers in the world and held his ground. He's only been wrestling for like three or four years and stuff. And this guy is like in great physical shape, is, is one of the best wrestlers on the Indies right now. Um, that's going to be the match that I'm really disappointed that I'm not going to see live. All right. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> All right. Um, so for NXT, I've got uh, five matches listed on this card. So uh, if we miss any, I apologize, but that's just the card that I've been given. Um, the first match I see is a eight-person mixed tag team match. It is Sanity, made up of Eric Young, Killian Dane, Alexander Wolfe, and Nikki Cross uh, versus the team of Ty Dillinger, Roderick Strong, No Way Jose, and my girl Ruby Riot. Who do you got in this one, Will? Um, I'm going to go with uh, insa- was it Insanity. Sanity. Sanity. Uh, I'm going to go with them. Um, you know, nothing against No Way Jose and Roderick Strong and everybody else and Ty Dillinger and stuff who just debuted in the Royal Rumble and stuff. Uh, but I think that they're gonna, they're gonna start the match off giving it to the quote unquote hills and stuff. Uh, you know, these guys, they're, they're in the midst of actually getting the push and everything, so I think that they're gonna actually get the nod. Well, just to be contrary, and I'm gonna go with the faces in this one, just because the sanity has, uh, been destroying them up until this point, so I think that they're gonna get some retribution. Plus, I think that they've got a, uh, can't miss prospect. And Ruby Riot, the former Heidi Lovelace. Um, so I think they're going to try to make her look strong, and, and I think she's going to get the pin in that match. Um, <clears throat> uh, next match I have listed, uh, Andre Cien Almas versus the debuting Al- Alistair Black. Um, I, I think this is going to be a fairly squash match. Alistair Black's going to come out and destroy him, and I, th- I think it's going to be really interesting. What do you think? Yeah, I'm definitely going to go with Alistair Black. Uh, they need to start him off very strong out the gate. And uh, this is the perfect venue and a perfect opportunity to go ahead and submit this guy if, you know, a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I, – I don't know too much about Tommy End, but from everything I've heard, uh, he's awesome. And uh, we uh, – it should be a, a good match, and I think that he's going to definitely come out with a win. All right, uh, the next match I have listed is a triple threat tag team match for the, oh, excuse me, triple threat tag team elimination match for uh, the NXT Tag Team Championship. It is uh, current champions, Authors of Pain with Paul Ellering versus uh, Gargano and Ciampa versus The Revival. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on this match? Oh, man. Um, I love all three teams. Obviously, you know, I'm kind of partial to the Revival uh, because they're Carolina guys. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to say they're going to give it to DIY. DIY. I'm going to say Gargano and Chapa. Uh I'm going to go with uh, the Revival and, and DIY are going to team up to get rid of the Authors of Pain. Um, that way we're guaranteed to have new tag team champions. And then that will be, you know, They've already had two really good matches already. Uh, their first match in the two out of three falls match was like a match of the year candidate. So I think this is going to be like the rubber match. Uh, and I'm going to give the nod to uh, Chopper and Gargano. I, I definitely think this is going to be the match of the night, if not the uh, match of the weekend. Um, because, as you said, DIY and The Revival have had amazing uh, matches and uh, – Throwing the Authors of Pain in there, I think, is going to be an interesting twist. It's going to break it up a little bit. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go with uh, DIY 
I, I think that they're going to win, but really any of these three teams could win. And uh, I would not be shocked if either DIY or the Revival end up on uh, SmackDown very soon. So um, next match I have listed, singles match for the NXT Women's Championship. It is the champion Asuka versus Ember Moon. Uh, I think that uh, by hook or by crook, Ember Moon's going to win this one. So that way Asuka doesn't have that belt on her so she can go to uh, SmackDown, possibly at WrestleMania or the week after. Um, I I don't think it's going to be a clean victory, but somehow Ember Moon's going to pull it off and uh, and she'll be the new champion. What are your thoughts? Um, I'm I'm not really like I remember Ember Moon when when she was on the Indies and stuff as Athena. She was a very solid, uh, very solid wrestler. Um, I was very shocked. Me myself, person, there's no knock on her. I was very shocked um, when she actually got the nod or when she actually got signed and debuted for NXT uh, because I felt like so many different female wrestlers who were better and right, who deserved to be signed. Um, I'm, I'm gonna have to say, um, because of the reasons that you said, Jane, because, you know, uh, uh, Osaka's about to get signed and stuff, and she's about to go to the main roster, I'll say that they're gonna give Ember Moon the nod. Only because what's saying about to go, she, she's about to go to the main roster, probably. Yeah, but we've been saying that, that Asuka's gonna be going to the main roster for at least the last six months. So, <laughs> who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Uh, well, I think well, the, okay, the, the hold on, Zane, Zane, hold on, Zane. I think like yeah. um, the biggest reason why was the biggest reason why Oscar had to go up to the main roster was why it took Finn Balor to go to the main roster so long. Is that in in Japanese wrestling in Japan and stuff they don't have to worry about wrestling towards the hard cam. They don't have to work the hard cam uh, to give the fans and the listeners and stuff a little backstage lingo. They don't have to, there's, there's no gym cam in New Japan or in all of Japan or whatever. They just wrestle, and then the camera people work around the match. Uh, at WWE, they have a very different style. You have to work towards the hard cam. You have to work towards the gym cam. And if you're not used to doing that, it takes a while. Uh, if you watch, like, a lot of Oscar's matches and stuff now, she's learned how to wrestle the WWE style, where she's wrestling towards the hard cam, uh, wrestling following the gym cam and working towards that as well. So now that she's picked up those little small nuances, now she's ready to move up to the main roster. Well, that, that definitely makes sense. Um, all right, so the main event of NXT TakeOver Orlando is a singles match for the NXT Championship. The challenger, Shinsuke Nakamura, the king of strong style, versus the glorious Bobby Roode, who is the champion. Uh, wh- who do you think is going to come out with the championship after that match? Man, you know what? There's really no losing when it comes to this match. Um you know, you have Bobby Roode, uh, who is amazing. Who was amazing in TNA, is amazing now. Uh, and now that he has the whole glorious gimmick and stuff, it's even better. Uh, it's even better. He's, he's totally, he can print out his own money, in my opinion. Um, and then you have Nakamura, who is the most popular Japanese wrestler in the world. Uh, it was a total steal for WWE, actually. Um, I'm gonna say that I'm going to say the glorious one. I'm going to say Bobby Roode comes out on top on this one. I don't think they're going to, I think they're going to hold off and of send him to the main roster. Um, matter of fact, I think Nakamura might make it to, to the, to the main roster before Bobby Roode does. Yeah, I, I agree with that. But I, I, I think that unless that there's another really good challenger coming up and I'm not talking about Cash Asono, um, I, I, they really need to figure something out with Bobby Roode. He gets the pop when he uh, comes out with the song and the entrance and everything, but his matches have been fairly stale. And you know, I, I, I he needs he needs a great opponent and he needs to to work uh, more that main event style. And I, you know, I I'm not a wrestler. I, I don't know. Bobby Roode's been wrestling for a very long time and he's he's at the top of his craft. But what I'm saying is that his song and his entrance is so great. That the matches are a letdown after that. Um, Let's see. And and his fin- you know, what, most of WWE's audience they watch for the entrance and they watch for the finishing moves. You know, my young son is a great example. He loves Randy Orton because he loves that song. He loves the slow walk to the ring. He loves the holding his arms out, and then he loves the RKO. Uh, so when you've got 
somebody like Bobby Roode, who's front loaded with an awesome entrance with an awesome song. And his finishing maneuver is, you know, just a variation on a DDT. You know, he needs to, he needs to pick it up in, in my opinion to, to keep those fans. Defend Bobby Roode if you'd like. Uh, I, I, you know, um, I think the reason Bobby Roode is popular in the way that Ric Flair in the 90s was popular. Like, he's still a heel, but the fans have so much respect for his body of work. Um, that even as a heel, even when he shoots, they're still going to cheer for him. Um, you know, a la, like I said, Ric Flair back in the 90s, it was like Ric Flair as a heel, but the fans have so much respect for him, you're going to cheer for him regardless. Uh, as far as you said, he needs to have more stellar matches. I think a lot of that is based, and we, we both all, we all know this, uh, a big part of that you have to blame to the creative, to the agents at, uh, WWE. I haven't seen the match myself, but I heard that when NXT was in Virginia and in Norfolk and stuff, it was uh, before he became, he got the title and stuff. Bobby Roode versus Cedric Alexander. They said it was a, a definitely it was the best match of the night. You know, I'm not gonna say it was a four or five star match with them, but they definitely said it was the match of the night. Um, Bobby Roode has the potential to work 60 minutes uh, whenever he wants to. You know what I'm saying? And in my opinion, I believe that he can work 60 minutes six days a week and twice on Sunday. I, I feel like Bobby Roode is a, a true throwback to the early 70s and 80s style of wrestling. Um, I, lo- I love, me myself particularly, I love the fact that Bobby Roode is kind of like the anti-spot monkey, um, that his <laughs> matches are very, that he's very deliberate, uh, that there's really no flash a lot of time. Like, the only flash you have from Bobby Roode is his entrance, and then you expect for him to go out there and do 100 miles, go 100 miles an hour, and then he doesn't. He's, like, very deliberate, very, very, you know, by the numbers. I'm going to do, I'm a wrestler. You know, I'm not here to entertain you people. I'm here to win. Um, I love that about Bobby Roode and stuff. Uh, and I think that once he, once eventually, when he goes up to the main roster, Hopefully they keep him like that. Uh, hopefully they don't try to, you know, repackage him into working 100 miles an hour because they don't need that, and he doesn't need that to get over. Okay. All right. Uh, you uh, Before we move on to count three, I uh, want to uh, send out a couple uh, congratulations. Uh, you'll be seeing this man uh, next weekend. Uh, our, our old buddy, uh, sometimes buddy, sometimes mortal enemy, Drew Skills coming out with a brand new T-shirt, very cool design by our friend, uh, the artist known as Chad Engel. Uh, so uh, when he has those available for sale, we will definitely post those on the Facebook page, and uh, but keep a lookout for those. Uh, tell tell us uh, a little about uh, the event that's coming up on April eighth. Uh, there, Will. Oh man! So April eighth, uh, Smash Funk Wrestling presents uh, Smash Funk. Um, you know, it's, it's a huge fan fest, uh, with just anybody and everybody. Chase Stevens, um, of, uh, of, uh, uh, Shane, not Shane, uh, yeah, Shane, Shannon Moore, uh, Marty Janetti, uh, the American Wolves are facing each other, which is probably going to be my favorite match of the night. I'm a huge American Wolves fan. Uh, I love their matches at the ROH when they were, when they were, uh, working each other and stuff at ROH. Um, former, so former NWA uh, World Heavyweight Champion Rob Kincaid's gonna be there. Uh, I'm sorry, Rob uh, Conway's gonna be there. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Kincaid. Oops. Oops. Um, Rob Conway. Uh, <laughs> Sugar D. Um, you know, one of the best cruiserweights in the state of Indiana. Troy Miller's gonna be there. Myself, Marty Janetti, uh, GTA. Uh, and unfortunately, Drew Skills, you know, he'll be there. Boo. I don't know why we even talking about Drew Skills. Like, <sighs> really? Like, even so, when he's so not on the about, show. Tell us about your match. It's, it's, uh, you, Troy Miller, Drew Skills, GPA, Marty? Shooky, and Marty Janetti, Party Marty, all, uh, six, uh, six way match for Drew Skills Smash uh, Pro Championship, right? Exactly. I want to say it's elimination. It's a six-way elimination, I actually think it is. Um, no offense to any of the other guys there. No, I mean, no offense, you know. Um, Troy Miller is, like, you know, four foot three, you know, 106 pounds and stuff. Uh, I'm not going to call He's not a vanilla midget. He's more like, you know, 
a butter pecan midget, whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, GPA has a good look, but he's also a cruiserweight. You know, Sugar D, I like him, but this is, you know, he's all about having fun and, and cracking jokes and dancing and stuff. And uh, this, I'm not coming here to have fun. I'm not coming here to party and stuff. And then, you know, as great as Marty Jannetty is, and he's definitely the veteran in the match and stuff, you know, with 25-plus uh, years' experience in the business, um, I feel like, you know, he's, he's, he's lost a couple of steps. Uh, you know, with that, I mean, even though he's lost a couple of steps, he still knows more than, he's forgotten more than I've ever known about wrestling. Uh, but he's still lost a couple of steps, and, and he's definitely, as far as size and power and stuff goes, he's no match for me. Um, the only person that, that really is going to be any competition, in my opinion, in this match is going to be Drew Skills. Uh, and Drew Skills is getting up there in age, and I feel like, you know, Drew has single-handedly dominated the state of Indiana and maybe the Midwest. Uh, with the exception of Congo Kong so long, that Drew Skills has kind of gotten kind of relaxed. Uh, I think that he's kind of gotten comfortable at being, you know, the the Smash Funk heavyweight champion. Then before, you know, he was the, the longest reigning Heroes and Legends champion. Um, and all these other titles that he's held, like, he's slowly starting to lose his grip. You know, he's gotten relaxed. He's got, he's thinking that, you know, nobody, he's untouchable. Uh, and, you know, now he's really going to find, he's really going to realize, you know, he's not as unbeatable as he thinks he is. Uh, so my plan is to go out there and get rid of everybody else and then, you know, take my time beating the piss out of Drew Skills. Well, I'm super looking forward to that. That's on April 8th uh, up in Valparaiso, Indiana at the Inman's Bowling Center. Should be a great time. I will be there oh. with my buddy uh, Bushwhacker Luke. I'm spending the weekend with Bushwhacker Luke that weekend. We're going to start off in uh, Carmel, Indiana, on the 7th, which is a Friday. Um, big show there uh, at the Mercy Road Church. And uh, then Saturday, uh, the 8th, up in Valparaiso. And then Sunday, the 9th, uh, we'll be at Heroes and Legends in Fort Wayne. What are we going to say? I forgot to say it. I forgot to say it, that the general manager of Smash Fest is none other than, like, you know, ECW original and legend, Raven, like I'm super excited about the fact I want to. I can't wait to see what Raven has in store for everybody and stuff. And like, uh, Jesus, with this guy in control of the show, man, it's, it's no telling what's going to happen now. I, and I think PN News is supposed to be there. <laughs> yeah, well, he replaced P, PN News was uh, unfortunately he had prior scheduling conflicts, or whatever. But he was replaced by Shannon Moore. Oh, okay, all right, all right, cool. Yes. Yeah. Um, so. And also, you had mentioned Congo Kong. Uh, I think Killer Kev wanted us to mention something about Congo Kong. Um, was this about his Facebook post earlier, uh, Killer Kev? Yes. Um, why don't you, why don't you uh, say something about it? Well, basically, he announced that uh, he finally gets to take his fantasy job and make it his for real job. Um, it sounds like he is uh, putting the... Uh, putting everything else behind him and going full time, full bore into professional wrestling. This is our friend, Steve Wilson, who we've interviewed on, uh, the undisputed wrestling show in the past. So look at those archives on the angry marks podcast network. Uh, Steve Wilson is the man behind Congo Kong. And, uh, I think that Congo Kong is going to be debuting on impact tomorrow, right? Um, I believe that is the plan. Um, if you've watched, uh, TNA Explosion, I believe he was on there a couple of months ago as well. Um, if you've been following Jeff Jarrett's uh, Global Force Wrestling, you've seen him there several times. So, and of course, it's, it's, and, and of course, you've probably, you know, if if you're a big fan of independent wrestling, you've probably seen one of his matches somewhere on the independent scene over the years. Yes, yes, um, and uh, uh, I, I don't know if it's. Tomorrow or if it's the next week that he'll be debuting on Impact, uh, but it's great guy and uh, super cool. So uh, it's it's go for it. it's about time. It's about time that you know uh, Congo really got his just due. You know what I'm saying? Like I was only introduced to him um, as, as, as once I became a part of this show. I had no idea what about him, so anything about him until I became a part of the Angry March podcast family. Uh, but since then, the last three years and stuff, you know, you realize how amazing this guy is, how great he moves for a gentleman his size. And not only that, but how good of a person he is just behind the scenes. Uh, 
you know, you see his persona and stuff, and you think he'd be very angry, very grumpy, a very bitter, you can say he'd be one of those bitter, angry vets or whatever. And then you meet him backstage and stuff, you realize he's a really cool, honest, down-to-earth gentleman and stuff uh, who really, not, of course, we know a lot of times guys don't get what they deserve. Um, and you always say, oh, this guy deserves it, this guy deserves it. But uh, not only has this guy, not only has Steve deserved, not only does Steve deserve it, but he's also earned uh, everything that he, he's getting right now in the future and stuff. Okay, all right. Uh, you ready for count three? Totally ready. Okay, well, let's do some uh, WrestleMania uh, proper uh, predictions and, you know, Let's not try to spend an hour on each match because there are 13 matches uh, listed on the card that I have. So uh, let's start with one of the kickoff show matches. It is uh, the SmackDown Women's Championship. This, they've been very vague with this match so far, saying that uh, it's every woman available um, taking on Alexa Bliss, who is the champion. They haven't said if it's going to be a gauntlet match, if it's an elimination match, if it's uh, one fall, and they haven't said how many participants there are going to be, and if there's going to be any returning faces uh, to it. So, uh, people that we we have a pretty good notion that are going to be in it: Alexa Bliss, the champion; uh, Becky Lynch, the former champion; Natalia, Mickey James, and uh, Carmella, and the returning Naomi. So, uh, what are your thoughts on this match? Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to say for, for time and stuff, for, you know, time restraints and stuff, I'm just going to go ahead and go, I thought Nikki Bella was supposed to be in this match. No, she's in the, uh, tag team match with, uh, That's Cena. right, that's right. Um, well then, with her not being in the match, I'm going to say they're going to put it back on Becky Lynch. Okay, all right. Uh, I'm going to go out, uh, not too far out on a limb, but I think that Naomi's going to pick up the win. I think that, uh. Her being from Orlando, it's a nice, nice move for them. Uh, get the crowd warmed up. So I'm going to say Naomi. All right, a uh, another pre, uh, excuse me, kickoff show match. Uh, one that I'm actually really looking forward to. Uh, WWE Cruiserweight Championship match. The uh, challenger, A Double, Austin Aries versus the champion Neville. Uh, I. I think that they're going to have Neville keep it, uh, but it's going to be a great match. And since this will be their first one-on-one -on -one match, it, it, this could be a program, if they work it right, that can go all the way up to SummerSlam with Austin Aries finally getting the uh, the championship at, at SummerSlam. That's, that's, I don't know if that's more of a prediction or more of a hope, but I'm going to say that Neville keeps the championship. Uh, what are your thoughts, Will? Yeah, I'm definitely going to go with the king of the cruiserweights. He's definitely going to retain against the greatest man who ever lived. Uh, it's definitely going to be a great match, definitely a high-flying, high-impact match and stuff. Uh, and we've already seen how it's kind of already evolved into a storyline. So definitely this is going to go all the way up until at least SummerSlam. Yeah, I, it's interesting seeing Austin Aries uh, work that as a face but still keep that heel edge. I think he's doing a great job, and I, I think that this could be a big program for both of them. And, you know, they both kind of said, even though it's on the kickoff show, that uh, it could be match of the night and that they want to prove themselves in that setting. So I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. And I think it's it's the first um, WrestleMania for both of them because Neville was hurt last year. He was supposed to be in the six-way match, six-way ladder match, and he was hurt last year. So uh, I think that they're both going to be trying to prove a lot that night. Um, next match that I have listed, another uh, kickoff show match, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. I'm going to go briefly go through the names that I have listed here. Mojo Raleigh, Apollo Crews, Big Show, Kurt Hawkins, Braun Strowman, Gold Dust, R-Truth, Primo, Epico, Curtis Axel, Bo Dallas, Jinder Mahal, Sami Zayn, Fandango, Tyler Breeze, Ziggler, Rhino, Slater, Jason Jordan, Chad Gable, both the Usos, Mark Henry, Sin Cara, Titus O'Neil, Connor Victor of the Ascension, Kalisto, Aiden English, and Simon Gotch. I, one thing that I'm just going to throw in an editorial here, I think it's ridiculous that the SmackDown Tag Team Champions 
are on the pre-show battle royal. I feel so bad for for the Usos, and I feel bad for American Alpha, just because those guys have had been having killer matches, and they're basically the whole SmackDown tag team division is in this uh, Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Um, with that, though, I, I think that Braun Strowman uh, is going to either win or come in second, and I'm going to say the same thing for uh, Sami Zayn. I, I know that I'm kind of copping out on a prediction here, giving my two most likely candidates, but I really do not know on this one. Uh, what are your thoughts, Will? Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you there. It's a damn shame that the tag team champions, not only the tag team champions, the Usos, but also American Alpha have been relegated to a pre-show battle role. Um, I almost feel like the, the, the intergender tag team match kind of took their spot. Um, that's the spot that they probably should have had, and they lost it. Um, I feel like you know, no matter what, no matter how hot SmackDown's tag team division is, I feel like SmackDown's tag team division is way stronger than Raw's. Uh, they're still going to treat SmackDown like the B-show, period, no matter what. Um, with that being said, for this uh, for this battle role, for this match, uh, I think it's going to come down to one of two people. I think that the, that, uh, the big show, who is in the best shape of his life, Jesus Christ, this guy looks amazing now. Uh, I think that's going to be the big show versus, uh, Braun Strowman. Um, and I think that the big show is going to do business and it's going to put, uh, the big man from North Carolina over because Braun Strowman is from North Carolina. So, you know, I got, I got to support my Carolina guys, man. Uh, I'm going to go with Braun Strowman. <laughs> I'm going to go with Braun Strowman and stuff, man. Uh, when the Andre the John battle roll, uh, mainly for the simple fact that, they're never going to let the big show win it. I, I feel in my heart that they're never going to let him actually win that. He has won it. He won it the second year. I thought, no, I, no, he didn't, did he? Yeah, it was Cesaro, then Big Show, then Oh, Baron. that's right. That's right. I forgot the year that he won it. I'm sorry, I thought it was Cesaro, then Baron Corbin. My bad. I don't think he's never won the Royal Rumble, but he's won the Andre. Yeah. So. Well, I'm definitely going to go with Braun Strowman for this one. Do you think that, you know, last year they brought back uh, Tatanka, they brought in Shaq for the Battle Royal. Do you think that there's any chance that we'll see any uh, uh, big stars in it or returning uh, returning guys? Negative. I think that this is going to be all SmackDown. Uh, there's not going to be any surprises. They didn't give us any surprises in the Royal Rumble. They're not going to give us any at WrestleMania. Okay, all right. Um I, I disagree. I think that they're going to bring in at least one big name for it. Um, to to I, I don't just because of what they did last year. I think that they're going to continue that because they they like bringing in big names for for WrestleMania. So, um, all right. The next match that I have listed, um, the triple threat ladder match for the WWE Raw Tag Team Championship. It is the champions, the Club versus. Uh, Soft. That's what my kids call them. They don't know that their names are Enzo and Cass. They just call them Soft. Um, and uh, Cesaro and Sheamus, the odd couple. Um, with with the ladder match stipulation, I don't see Gallows climbing a ladder. Maybe Carl Anderson. Um, I I think that it's going to be Enzo and Cass that are going to take this. I think that somehow. Uh, Enzo's going to, uh, or excuse me, Cass is going to throw Enzo from the top turnbuckle uh, to the top of the ladder to, to get the championship. So I'm going to say Enzo and Cass. What are your thoughts? I'm definitely going to say Enzo and Cass, man. They've been um, teasing them winning the tag titles and teasing them winning the tag titles for months now, since their debut. Um, and they're definitely the, like the most popular tag team, in my opinion, on Raw. Um Feel good moment of the night. Um, that and I just can't like. In my opinion, uh, Enzo may be the new Rey Mysterio as far as uh, WrestleMania outfits goes. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering where um, you were going with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm serious. Like, I think that he, I can't wait because I just saw a YouTube video where he was sneaker shopping because uh, Enzo always wears sneakers. He doesn't wear boots and stuff in the wrestling ring uh, because when he was in NXT and so when he was in the Indies, he actually uh, broke his leg wearing wrestling boots, and so he's sworn to never wear wrestling boots again. So he wears, uh, he usually wears Jordans and stuff in, in the rain. Um, but I actually saw a video on YouTube where he was sneaker shopping, and, uh, he was, he may or may not have bought the, uh, the Marty McFly boots. 
he bought those and some other really exotic looking boots and stuff. Um, so I'm gonna say, you know, because he spent like close to three grand on sneakers for like WrestleMania stuff, that he's gonna have to, you know, go. They're definitely gonna have to win those tag titles just to cover his uh, credit card check or his credit card bill. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next match I have listed, Intercontinental Championship match, challenger Baron Corbin versus uh, champion uh, Dean Ambrose. What are you thinking on that one, Will? Um, I think that they're, this is the time where they're going to go ahead and uh, ascend Baron Corbin to the, to the mid-card, I guess you could say, for lack of a better word. Um, they're going to raise him up from being like a lower-card guy to an actual solid mid-card guy and stuff. Um Dean Ambrose is a good guy to get him over for that. So definitely Baron Corbin. Uh, he has the look. He has the size. He, he has the, the minimum basic skills to be a, a top of the mid card kind of champion. So yeah, I'll give it to Baron Corbin. I hate that we keep agreeing on things. I, I totally agree with what you're saying. I think that it's uh, Corbin's time. They need to, he won the Andre, the Memorial, Andre, the giant Memorial Battle Royal last year. They need to elevate him, um, and I, I think that this is a good opportunity. And uh, somehow they're going to involve forklifts. I don't know how they're going to do that. Um, their, their feud lately has been revolving around forklifts, so we'll see if they play any part in it, but I do think that Corbin's going to take the championship. All right, um, next match I have listed. This is the my low-key match that I'm most excited for this weekend, and I know that you mocked it a little bit earlier, but it's the mixed tag team match where it's uh, uh, Super Cena and uh, Fearless Nikki Bella versus The Miz and Maurice. I've, I've loved what they've, uh, how they've shot these promos for, for both uh, sides. Um, I think that The Miz is killing it. I think Maurice is doing a great job, and I... I I don't see how they can justify having Cena and Nikki go over in this match, um, but it is WWE, so you never know. But I'm hoping uh, this isn't mo- much of a prediction; it's more of a hope that uh, Miz and Maurice take this uh, uh, match. What, what do you think about it, Will? Yeah, I'm, I definitely I, I can't believe we're agreeing so much tonight, Zane. Um, oh, I'm definitely I'm definitely agreeing. I, I actually, unlike a lot of wrestlers, unlike a lot of people that's actually in the wrestling business. I've always been a fan of the Miz uh, for his work ethic, um, for his drive, for him so much being a company guy. Um, this guy put in the he put in the windshield time. He's taking the bumps. He's paid his dues and stuff, man. I'm a huge fan of the Miz. Um, I've always felt that the Miz was great on the mic, uh, and now a lot of people are starting to realize how good he really is. Um, I can't like just like you said. I can't see how. Cena and, and Nikki Bella going over this match is actually going to be good business. I don't think it will be. Um, whether John Cena wins or loses, um, I actually feel that if John Cena and Nikki Bella win, that it may hurt them as far as gimmick sales go. Uh, I feel that if they lose, if they get cheated, if the Miz and Marty's go over dirty, uh, it'll give Cena and Nikki Bella that sympathy factor, and kids will rush to, to the, the concession stands and stuff and start buying even more of this stuff. Um, you know, John Cena has that whole never say die, never give up thing. So they have to, he, he does better. Um, he does better when he has to fight back, when he always has to come back and stuff, when, he, when he's fighting back or when he's, he's coming up and fighting up. Um, him winning from the get-go is not going to do him any favors. Uh, I think that the fans are going to shit all over and stuff. So they have to lose uh, and get knocked down, and then he has to make a comeback and finally defeat the Miz and all that. Right. The next match I have listed is the uh, WWE United States Championship. It is uh, champion Chris Jericho versus challenger Kevin Owens. What do you think is going to happen in this match, and uh, are you looking forward to it? Of course I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Kevin Owens, huge fan of Jericho. Uh, Jericho, you know, is like father Tom, man. He, he, he doesn't age whatsoever. Uh, you can look at his matches now, you can look at his matches 15 years ago, and you can tell that he's really never lost a step. He's kind of like Christopher Daniels. Um, <laughs> if, if, you know what I'm saying. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to go with uh, Kevin Owens uh, going over this and fighting his way back to the top. Once again, it didn't happen this year, but I'm saying it's going to happen next year. 
Kevin Owens, Brock Lesnar, main event, WrestleMania. <laughs> um, I, I had said that the uh, triple threat tag team match for NXT might be the best uh, match of the weekend. This this match has the a shot of being the best match of the weekend also. I think that both these guys uh, knew that they were at the top of the card all year long, but yet they're relegated to a, uh, a mid-card match here. I think that they're going to pull out all the stops. I think that they're going to kick ass. I, I, I hate the way that this uh, feud was built. I did not like the, the best friends um, uh, thing that they did, uh, the Festival of Friendship, and I know that a lot of people loved it, said that it was one of the best things that they've ever seen. I wasn't impressed with it, um, but I know that these guys are going to deliver in the ring, and uh, I think they both have chips on their shoulder uh, for, for not being in the main event scene for, for this WrestleMania, so I think that they're going to kick ass. Um, next match I have listed fatal four way elimination match for the WWE raw women's championship. Okay. Let me pause right here. The pre-show we're on the East coast. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Jay. I'm sorry. The, the pre-show starts at five and they've got three matches listed for that. So they're going to space those out pretty far. Um, between these, um, ten matches that are listed during the main show, plus all the rigmarole and gaga that they do during WrestleMania, plus uh, who's Flo Rida and Pitbull are going to be performing. That this this card's going to go on until 2 a.m. Last year they went an extra 45 minutes, even though they it was a five hour block. They still went like five hours and 45 minutes for the main show. I think this year is going to go even more. Um, so I'm, I'm off my rant for a moment. Um, it is a four-way elimination match for the WWE Raw Women's Championship. It is the champion Bailey versus uh, challenger Charlotte Flair, Sasha Banks, Nia Jax. Uh, Will, what, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I love all the women in this match. Um, all of them are probably, you know, with the exception of Natalia, are probably like, the four best, with the exception of Natalia and Becky Lynch, are uh, um, maybe the four most talented ladies on the actual main roster. Um, you can't go wrong with any four of them as a champion, um, but I'm going to go with Nia Jax. There is no, I cannot, in my mind, as a wrestler, as a fan, as a booker, there's no way that you cannot have Nia Jax go over in this match. Um, she is so, you've built her up for like, what, a year now, Zane? Almost a year? Where uh-huh. she is just beaten, where she's just beating the piss out of everybody, uh, out of females who are the same size as these ladies, beating the piss out of them in less than five, in less than two minutes. Um, now don't get me wrong, a lot of the ladies think that if she was facing with not the caliber of Sasha Banks or Charlotte, um, but she just totally demolished fucking Bailey. Uh, at their match on Raw and stuff to get into this match. Um, there is no, I, I really feel that Nia Jax is the perfect woman to, uh, usher in the next year of women's wrestling for WWE. Um, none of the other ladies I can see will really have an impact on, as far as the women's division on Monday Night Raw, like Nia Jax. Okay. Um, I, this one, really, as you said, any any of the four could possibly win this match. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that there's some sort of obviously there's gonna be shenanigans involved. I think that Sasha Banks is gonna walk out champion. I don't I, but really all four of them could win, and I wouldn't be upset about it. So um, next match, I think that this. The stipulation to this match is the most interesting in that it is not, there, there are no stipulations to it. I think that, uh, AJ Styles set it up very well this past week on SmackDown. It is, uh, Shane McMahon versus AJ Styles, where AJ said, yeah, you've jumped off large things at, at WrestleMania, you know, but if you try to do that, if you try to bring a chair in, you'll be disqualified. If you, if you leave the ring to climb something really tall, you'll get counted out because it'll be a 10 count. This is going to be a regular match. And I think that that makes 
such a cool dynamic to it. And it's so weird that not having a stipulation is the coolest variation on this match. Um, so it's AJ Styles versus Shane McMahon. I, I don't know how you, as you said, where you went off about Nia Jax has to win the women's championship. There's no way that Shane McMahon should be able to beat AJ Styles. It would not make any sense at all. Um, but with this being WWE, you never know. I'm going to say AJ Styles wins it, and somehow Shane McMahon, either before, after, or during the match, will climb some roller coaster theme monstrosity and uh, try to paralyze himself. Um, okay, so you've already said that two of your matches may or may not be the match of the night or the match of the weekend. I think that this is the sleeper match. Uh, I think that this is the match that everybody's kind of like, oh, well, you know, it's AJ Styles. We're going to watch it because it's AJ, but, uh, you know, Shane McMahon is in it. Um, I, I said in a recent interview and stuff uh, that Shane McMahon, this is the match I'm most looking forward to for the fact that Shane McMahon is not a trained wrestler, per se, uh, but has had, in my opinion, just as many WrestleMania moments as a lot of the guys on the main, that who are wrestlers and are on this fucking roster. Uh, number two, with the exception of the match with his dad, and it really wasn't that bad of a match either, if you actually look at it, Shane McMahon has never had a bad match. Ever. Um, how many guys on the main roster can say that they've never had a bad match? Shane McMahon has never had a bad match. Uh, that may be due in part to the fact of who he's always been in the ring with, but it takes two people to have a good match, regardless. I don't care if you're in there with Ric Flair. It still takes two people to have a good match. Um, AJ Styles is, hands down, the best wrestler in the world, without a doubt. Uh, so you take somebody who who is just as passionate about wrestling as Shane McMahon and who is willing to take the risk like Shane McMahon, and then you have somebody who is so great and is probably, in my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinions, the best wrestler in the world. You put those two people together in the ring, and that is a recipe for magic, in my opinion. I think that this match is going to surprise everybody, uh, not just, you know, the fans in attendance and the fans watching, but also, you know, a lot of the critics and stuff. I think that this, is going to, this may end up being the match of the night and not necessarily because of some crazy spot that Shane McMahon does. Uh, with that being said, I think that obviously, once again, Zane, you are right. There's no way, unless, you know, uh, Shane McMahon has somebody, one of his goons or whatever, um, come and jump AJ Styles before the match even starts. He doesn't stand a fighting chance against, uh, AJ Styles. With that being said, AJ Styles is definitely going to get to win. Okay. All right, um, and I, I like your your point about this could be the sleeper match because those are all valid points. I uh, I hadn't thought of that, so I, I know that AJ. You know, I I think that I don't know what the plans were originally for AJ um, going into Mania, but I think that the brass saw that uh, what he did uh, with Ellsworth and how he got some really good matches out of a guy like James Ellsworth. And Shane McMahon's like, oh, I, 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 I want to do this too. Put me in there with him. So I, you know, I think, I think it is going to be a good match. Um, all right. Next match that I have listed, it is, uh, Seth Rollins versus Triple H. And what, are, what are they dubbing this? Uh, the, uh, No Malice. Um, what, what's the, what's the, oh man, I'm having an issue here. Uh, do you remember what they were kept calling it on uh, for the contract signing? No, I have. I can't remember either. I have no idea. I didn't watch Raw this week. <laughs> hold harm, hold harmful, whatever. Uh, it's basically a non-sanctioned match. Um, Triple H, Seth Rollins. Uh, why, why don't you go and and what do you think about this? Um, I, of course, this is a match that you know. This is the most predictable match uh on the WrestleMania card in my opinion. I definitely we knew a year ago when Triple H uh kind of dubbed uh or two years ago when he dubbed him, you know, the future of WWE and stuff. We knew eventually Semi Cal I mean I'm sorry. Oh Jesus. Semi uh damn it. Seth Rollins was gonna turn on Triple H and become a babyface and stuff. Uh and it was eventually gonna end up being him versus Triple H. 
obviously, if he's facing Triple H, it's only going to be on one show that Triple H is actually going to wrestle, and that's going to be WrestleMania. Um, you know, uh, Triple H is in great shape, um, you know, a couple of years away from his prom, on the other side of his prom. Uh, Seth Rollins is coming back from a really bad knee injury and stuff. Uh, I, I'm not looking at this as being a great technical masterpiece. I think it's just going to be very brutal, um, very hard-hitting. Uh, may or may not get color. You know, Triple H is the, the C, the, what is it, the CFO? COO? Of the, yeah, he's the COO of the company and stuff. So he, who's to say that, you know, they get a little color in this match and stuff, and he's like, oh, it was a mistake. Who's going to find Triple H? Um, right. I, I think that this may be the popcorn match. And I don't, I don't really expect too much out of this match. Not really looking forward to it. Um, but I also know that Triple H will do business. Um, and I'm saying that Seth Rollins goes over. Seth Rollins goes over, uh, but Samoa Joe still, uh, with, with interference, there's going to be interference with, uh, Samoa Joe, but Seth Rollins still gets over, or still goes over, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I definitely think that Samoa Joe's going to have something to do with the ending. I, you know, my hope in this match, and I'm not a, a huge nostalgia guy, but I think that with the brand split, um, with them coming together a couple times a year, I think that this would be a great time to pop a Shield reunion just for one night where uh, uh, Dean Ambrose and uh, Roman Reigns both come out to help uh, uh, Seth Rollins uh, take out Samoa Joe and uh, Triple H. I think that that would be a really cool thing to do, and then they could even, you know, move... Uh, Samoa Joe over to SmackDown to feud with Dean Ambrose after the fact. So I, I don't know. I just, I think that that would be a cool outcome. I don't, I'm not saying that that will happen. Uh, I think that, I think that you do have to give the win to Rollins, but who knows with, as we keep saying, this is WWE. We, you never know. Um, next match I have listed Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker. It's the battle of whose yard is it? Uh, Undertaker is pretty much the, uh, Clint Eastwood Gran Torino character. Um, I, the, the only thing that makes sense to me in this match is to have, uh, Reigns just destroy, uh, Taker, uh, make it a, a quick squash match and have Undertaker go into the Hall of Fame next year. I, I don't know if that's going to be a popular thing for me to say if we're going to get hate mail about that. But uh, I, I think that that's the only way that you play this. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, no no offense, but like the, the Taker match um, doesn't have as much, it's not as big of a draw as it used to be now that he's got beat. Now that the, the streak has been broken by Brock Lesnar and stuff. Um, don't get me wrong, like in the last couple of episodes, I didn't see this past Monday Night Raw, but the, the last few Raws I saw and stuff, you know, Taker looked... Uh, not necessarily like the take of old, but he definitely looked very, very intimidating. Um, I don't see, you know, Taker is a, a very old school guy. And of course, in this business, they, the, what's the word? The old saying goes, you come in on your back, you go out on your back and stuff. Uh, if this is going to be Taker's last actual, uh, WrestleMania, this is the last, you know, if he's going off into the sunset with this one, um, then yeah, he's definitely going to go out on his back and Roman Reigns is going to go, uh, He's definitely going to go over and stuff. I don't see, I don't see it being a squash. I, I you know, this is not uh, uh, Goldberg versus Lesnar. This, this may go a little while. It might go ten, ten to fifteen minutes. Uh, Roman Reigns doesn't have the, the best cardio. He's not going to be a twenty. It's not going to be a twenty-five, thirty-minute classic. Uh, this is not going to be Taker versus Shawn Michaels or Taker versus Triple H or Taker versus whoever else. This is going to be twelve, fifteen minutes max. Uh, Roman Reigns over and stuff, and then they're gonna let, you know, as you like to call them, they're gonna let Clint Eastwood ride off into the sunset. <laughs> can, can I jump in here and comment on this real quick? Of course, super producer Killer Kev. Fuck Vince, Mc, fuck Vince McMahon for this. Just fuck him for this. Cause, uh, god damn it, who wins here? Really? And I, and I, I mean that in, in, in the, not just, not who wins and who loses the match. I mean, what is the upside? of this if undertaker wins it's meaningless it is literally meaningless 
because nobody gives any fucks about Roman Reigns, that's for sure. This is this match isn't going to be a feather in his ca- in Undertaker's cap for sure. And if Roman Reigns win, well, fans are already they already hate him anyway. He sucks, and they're gonna they're gonna have him get a win over the most popular WWE character ever. Yeah, that's really gonna help his fucking career. No, and then it's just the fact that it's old and beat up Undertaker going against no cardio having Roman Reigns. The fans certainly ain't gonna win on this. My God, this might as well be your piss break match. It, it's just gonna suck and it's gonna be sad. And in retrospect. Everybody's just gonna feel sick for even having to watch it. It this was just bad. Fuck you, Vince. That's all I gotta say. Wow. Okay. Thanks, Kella Kev. I think Kev's been going to the Jim Cornette School of Broadcasting. All right. Um Ooh, man. The, the the next match I have listed is a match for the WWE Championship, the Challenger. And Royal Rumble winner Randy Orton versus the champion Bray Wyatt. What do you think there, uh, Huck? Uh, I'm going to say Bray Wyatt gets it, man. He should have been, Bray Wyatt should have been the champion a year ago. Maybe even two years when he had his feud with Cena. He should have been the champion then. Um, nobody else is compelling on that roster. Nobody else captures an audience, uh, like Bray Wyatt does. His presence, his promos, um, his, you know, hard-hitting, bruiserweight style of wrestling and stuff. It's very endearing to my heart. Uh, Randy Orton, Randy Orton, you know, whether he wins or loses, he's still the Viper. It doesn't matter. If he does, if he does, in my opinion, if Randy Orton wins, it's an ego thing um, where he wants another title reign and stuff. Uh, but I'm definitely going to give this nod to, to Bray Wyatt. Um, I think that he's, uh, I think it's going to be Bray Wyatt, and in the future we'll see Bray Wyatt versus Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens goes over on Bray Wyatt, and then we'll see uh, Kevin Owens versus Brock Lesnar. Bye, him. I really don't think that Orton has an ego about this stuff anymore. He, uh, I think that when they put him put the championship on him in the last what three or four years, it's been actually he's he's been a transitional champion, and he knows it. Um, I, I think that Bray Wyatt needs to come out of this looking super strong. You don't necessarily have to win to look super strong, but I think that if you go into WrestleMania as a champion and you don't walk out as champion, then then that's not a good thing for you. And I think I think that he needs this win here. I, I hope that he wins, and I think that he will. Um, but I'm, I've been really disappointed the last couple of weeks. This this feud had some really cool ways they could have gone, and it's just been really disappointing the way that they've gotten us there with burning down shacks and now um, some sort of mysterious weapon uh, that looks like a tennis racket with an X on it. It's just, it's been super cheesy. And I know that that worked for undertaker st- sort of things. I, they, they need to figure this out pretty quickly if they want uh, why it to be over for the long term. Um, all right. The, Oh, wait, one question for you. Do you think that, uh, the show starts at five in Orlando. That's the the kickoff show. The main show starts at seven. Sun's probably not going to go down until probably nine nine thirty in Orlando. Do you think that there's a possibility that this match, uh, that the Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton, will be in in the sun? Hell no! This match isn't going on until about ten forty five, man. I don't know well, if that, you've ever been. No. Huh? That's true because the card's going on until like 2 a.m. I forgot about that. Like, I don't like, uh, so, oh, 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 away from the WrestleMania stuff, away from WWE, have you ever been in a show that was 10 matches long? Yes. Okay. I've been, like I said, I've been on a 10 match card before. I've been on a, I've been, I'm on a card that legitimately had 15 or, yeah, you know, 15 fucking matches. Um, they had five matches on like the pre show and then like 10 matches on the actual card. It started at seven o'clock, and we didn't get out of there until one. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, so the show was over at like eleven forty-five. Uh, I'm telling you right now, like this match isn't going on at the earliest. This this match is going on at ten forty-five at the very earliest. And and those uh, fifteen match cards that you've been on probably didn't have a musical break with uh, Pitbull and Flo Rida either, did they? No, it didn't. It okay. did not. It had like a twenty-minute intermission. 
<laughs> Did they have two or three intermissions so that way they could keep selling popcorn and, and hot dogs? No, I wish they would have. They didn't. Uh, it was, it was one intermission and it was, oh my God. Like, and the bad thing was, I was the main event versus C.W. Anderson. And like, at, we didn't go on until 11.15. And by that time, we had both been there since noon because they had, uh, a, a meet and greet and stuff at two o'clock. And then they had the pre-show that started at five. And then the actual start, show started at seven. Like, by the time we got, by the time we actually got out there, we were already tired and we were just ready to go home and go back to the hotel by then. <laughs> All right, well, main event time, WWE Universal Championship. It is Brock Lesnar being accompanied the ring uh, by Paul Heyman taking on the champion Goldberg. Uh, Goldberg has had roughly five minutes of in-ring time, bell-to-bell time, since his return. Um, and that, that's including Royal Rumble, where he was in it for like three minutes. Um <sighs> They, they, to me, they have to put the belt on Lesnar. Um, I think that Goldberg's already lost his luster. Um, he's come out recently on uh, Edge and Christian's podcast saying that this return has been miserable for him, that he's only doing it for his kid, but uh, he's he's not having fun working out so much. Um, I, I, I. I can definitely see this crowd turning on him. I think that the nostalgia is over. Uh, once they put that red strap on him, I think that the, the fans have turned on him. Um, I, it only makes sense to put it on Brock Lesnar, but I, I don't know with, with WWE anymore. Uh, what, what are your thoughts there, Will? Can I just say, first off, how ungrateful is fucking Goldberg? Um, what was he doing before he came back? He was like, hosting these BS shows on, like, the Speed Network or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, really, nobody gave a shit what Goldberg was really doing. Um, and then he comes back, and they put the strap on. They give him this super huge push. He's worked, like you said, he's worked five total minutes. And this guy has been, and I, and I actually listened to the podcast, the Edge of Christian podcast, where he's bitching and complaining. It's like, and you bitch and you complain, and you get paid more than everybody else. You get paid so much more than guys who are in the first one or two matches. They're working for a tenth of what you're working for, and they're working twice as hard. Um, and you come back, you get limited dates, and then they give you the main spot at WrestleMania that everybody's busting their ass to get. Um, so that's, it's, it's just totally disrespectful, not only to his coworkers, to his company, but the wrestling business in general, for him to complain about having to work out. For him complaining about, oh, I'm only doing this for my, for my kids. Like, that was completely disrespectful and a slap in the face to, uh, any and everybody who laces up a pair of boots or sneakers and steps into the ring or anybody who has anything to do with a wrestling show. Um, completely disappointed in him, not only as a wrestler, but as a man. Um, with that being said, uh, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. They, they have to give it back to the hottest ticket in pro wrestling right now. Um, when Brock Lesnar was a champ, even with his limited dates appearing as a champ, every time they said Brock Lesnar was going to be there, uh, ratings went up, the show was packed, you know what I'm saying? Paul Heyman was cutting great, amazing promos. Um, and the WWE title actually had credibility. Um, Conor McGregor was not talking shit about professional wrestling when Brock Lesnar was the champion. <laughs> Like, Brock Lesnar has a credibility to the WWE title, whether it's the Universal title or the actual WWE title, that nobody else in that roster can. Um, with that be, uh, so with, with all of those things put in, uh, end of the night, Brock Lesnar gets the title. Okay, man, we agreed way too much on this. Um, before we hit the big question uh, for the week, uh, Give us those plugs of uh, your upcoming events. I know this weekend the the biggest uh, event that you've got going on is your anniversary uh, with your lovely wife, and you're going to sleep in until noon. But tell us about the following weekend. Uh, the, uh, yeah, that's right. This weekend I'm celebrating my fourth wedding anniversary with my lovely wife, Selena. Uh, we're going to sleep all day and watch movies and then go to bed early because we're both old. Uh, but next weekend, Valparaiso, Indiana. I'm going to be Smash Funk Wrestling, uh, present Smash Fest. I'm in the main event 
about ready to beat up Drew Skills and take his smash funk title. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's uh me. It's a, hey, I, and I'm not only beating him up for the title, I'm beating him up for you, Vane, because I've seen what happened, what he did to you. You I know what I'm saying? Not only, you know what I'm saying? So I got to get some revenge for you because you're my homie. You know what I'm saying? So we're that. definitely going to get it. You're welcome. Um, but, yeah, so next month, the operation of Indiana, main event, me, Drew Skills, Troy Miller, Sugar Dunkerton, uh, GPA, and the legendary rock, I mean, I'm sorry, the legendary rocker, uh, midnight rocker, uh, Marty Gennetti. Um, the weekend after that, I will be in Hickory, North Carolina, doing a charity show for bikers against child abuse. Uh, every once in a while, you know, as a wrestler, you need to get back to the communities that you wrestle in and stuff, uh, and for the fans and everything. So that's a great, great charity. Uh, if anybody's in the, the Hickory, Charlotte, Greensboro, which is the Salem area next Saturday or, uh, two weeks from now and stuff on the 15th, definitely come check it out. Uh, come donate and stuff against bikers, against child abuse. Uh, and then the weekend after that, I will be at NWA Georgia Extreme, um, down in South Georgia. Uh, I have no idea who I'm facing yet. You know, I've heard rumors that it may be the Incredible Hulk versus the Tokyo Monster. Uh, I've heard rumors that it may be the Incredible Hulk versus the NWA Continental Champion Bad Blood. Uh, so there's no telling that the, 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 the match hasn't been announced yet and stuff. So I'm looking forward to seeing what's going on. I am. Didn't the Tokyo Monster just hold a, an NWA championship recently? Uh, as of right now, he is the NWA National Champion. Okay, yeah. All right, cool. Um, yes. Well, my weekend, I will be missing uh, Intense Championship Wrestling in Marion, Indiana. They're, they'll be running on the 1st. It's called Intense Mania. should be a great card. Um, I will be missing that show because uh, I'm going to an awesome wedding with a mashed potato bar, and I will take pictures and uh, uh, give you guys updates on that next week. Um, the following week... And will be a, a big one for me, hanging out with uh, Bushwhacker Luke all weekend uh, here in Carmel, Indiana, um, for uh, Wrestling Theology Fellowship, and it will be at Mercy Road Church. It is a free show uh, with suggested donation, meaning that if you've got some money to give to them, that would be great. They, uh, We've got a donor that will match anything that we take in at the door, um, but, you know, most wrestling cards is twelve dollars, or you can't get in. You know, this is a ten dollars suggested donation. If you've got a family of five, and you can give thirty-five dollars to see a great night of wrestling, you can give thirty-five dollars. You know, it's a suggested donation, um, but it, it should be a great show. Uh, headlined by Bushwhacker Luke versus uh, Pro Wrestling's Jackass Dale Patrick's. Uh, if you don't know Dale Patrick's, look him up. He's He's a great guy here in Indianapolis, but he's traveled to uh, CCW. Uh, he's done uh, uh, IWA Mid-South. He's down in Florida right now this weekend, so definitely should be a fun show. Following night, April 8th in Valparaiso, Indiana, at the Inman Bowling Center, Smash Fest. Great show, uh, loaded card in the main event. be that six-way uh, elimination match for the uh, Smash, uh, Pro, Smash Mouth Pro Championship being held by Drew Skills currently. Uh, then the following night will be uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, Heroes and Legends. Um, my uh, Drew Skills will be taking on Jerry the King Lawler. And uh, the main event, it will be seeing our buddy Congo Kong take on the Ryback for the Heroes and Legends Championship. So that should be an amazing weekend. I uh, can't wait to hang out with you, uh, Will. Um, so, yeah. All right, the big question for the week. Will, who do you think will have a better chance of being on WrestleMania? Now, I'm not talking about – I'm talking about Sunday. I'm not talking about the night after WrestleMania on Monday. Who do you think will ha- will be more likely to see on the WrestleMania show? Will we see The Rock or will we see Finn Balor? Ooh, man. Um, hmm. I'm going to say The Rock because is it the new Fast and Furious movie coming out like two weeks after WrestleMania, like April 14th or something like that? Something like that. Yeah, so I'm going to say The Rock. Um, 
he uh, he might make his appearance. I was definitely going to say the Rock may make his appearance. Uh, he's definitely buddies with Flo Rider and Pitbull. He's a Miami guy, you know what I'm saying, representing the 305. Uh, and WWE, oh, is, they're smart when it comes to, you know, advertising and, and getting, you know, uh, attention and stuff. They're definitely uh, geniuses when it comes to that. And, of course, you know, you got The Rock in probably one of the biggest, you know, movies of the of the this early in the year, uh, being a former WWE champion and stuff. They're definitely going to have him come out and promote his movie. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if during the Pitbull, Flow Rider, like interlude or whatever, if The Rock doesn't show up in some souped up tank in a tank on the WrestleMania stage or a souped up car. Uh, because have you seen the pictures of the setup so far? I've, I've, I've actively uh, tried to avoid them. Okay, well, spoiler alert, Zane. Um, well, no, spoiler I don't alert. The poster thing, but I don't want to actually see it. Okay, spoiler alert. The entrance ramp looks like a quarter mile track. It's like, they're definitely going to have the cart guys back and forth to the ring. There's no way anybody's going to pull an Ultimate Warrior and run all the way down there. This is not happening. They're going to have the cart guys down that entranceway. So uh, don't be surprised. And then, of course, it has a very low angle and stuff. It's not as high up as a lot of the other ramps have been. So don't be surprised if you see, like, some Fast and Furious type stuff during WrestleMania, people. <laughs> All right. I, I agree with you. I think that The Rock will definitely be there. Uh, he's been at every WrestleMania since, like, 28, um, whether he's been in a match or hosting or, like, last year where he came out with a flamethrower and the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. He will be – I think that he will be at WrestleMania, um, whether he's advertised or not. I think that hopefully we'll see Balor show up on Monday. Um to maybe challenge Lesnar. Uh, I, I don't know. Balor's ready to go. He's been uh, wrestling in some uh, non-televised uh, house shows. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to having him back, but I, I think that they'll hold him off until Monday. Uh, one last question for you. This isn't a big question, just a small question. Who's, whose uh, entrance is going to take longer, Undertaker or Randy Orton? Um, Undertaker. <laughs> okay, we're going to disagree. Not... I think Burton's going to take at least ten minutes to get to the ring, whether he's on a card uh... or not. He's going to take at least ten minutes. <laughs> I'll say, I'll say the Undertaker definitely. Okay, all right. Anything else that you want to add before we go? No, I think that's about it, man. Uh, you know, good luck to all the all the the, the guys and gals down there in Orlando. Um, Make sure that you re- – more than ever, Jesus, I'm going to go ahead and say this now. More than ever, make sure that when you're down there, you're not just representing yourselves, but you're representing uh, – not only you're representing the companies that are running that night, the companies that you work for back at home, and you're representing the wrestling business as a whole. Uh, don't forget that. You know what I'm saying? Carry yourselves correctly. Um, you know, have fun, party, and chill, but be safe about it and be smart about it. Don't give the business a black eye. Very well said. I – I can't add anything to that, so uh, thank you to uh, our awesome producer, Kilikev, and uh, everybody, stay nerdy. Enjoy WrestleMania. You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network.